go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Billy Crystal is on the program this evening. And the guy that Michael Barimo, I was telling you about earlier, the world champion, if you look just quickly at his name here on the card, you might think he was a world champion wrestler. <laughs> if, you look, if you look quickly at the card, you might yeah. think, oh, he's a world champion you know, wrestler. Well, I thought that earlier yeah, when but I he's saw not. the rundown. He's not a world champion wrestler. Right, he's not. But, but your eyes could play a trick on almost, him. Almost, yeah. So that's a clue. You've given us a clue. <laughs> I'm giving another clue. I was talking to my, and I hope I don't get billed for this, I was talking to my dermatologist. <laughs> <laughs> And I said to him, I said, he says, oh, you look terrific. And I know that's a lie because I've never looked terrific uh, day in my life. And, and I said, how long do I have to keep taking these damn painkillers? And he says, uh, well, are you still having pain? And I said, yes, I am. And, and he said, well, keep taking them until the pain goes away. <laughs> that, that was his advice. Yeah. That's worth about 500 bucks right <laughs> yeah, there. I, I guess so. Uh, now, I want to mention something. Uh, uh, a good friend of ours, uh, George Miller, uh, died uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, old friend of ours. I first met George, a comedian, been on this show 50, over 50 times. Good friend of yours. Everybody, yes. uh, we all know George. And uh, I met him in 1975, 1974, for the first time in uh, California. And he was a stand-up comedian, and uh, he was a great comic. And he's one of these guys, uh, in stand-up comedy, there's a bunch of comedians uh, that uh, everybody really thinks is just uh, the best. You know, if you're a comedian, there's a group of guys that will be your favorite. And George was one of those guys. I, there's probably musicians like that. Oh, sure. Because George always had, uh, like, the, the best and kind of the, the funniest and the, the most interesting jokes. And, and he was a great combination of just being really, really smart and a smart ass. Yes. <laughs> and silly. You know, it was just a, just a terrific combination, and over the years, uh, we got to be, uh, well, he's probably my closest, uh, oldest friend. And uh, George had been uh, ill for, oh, I guess, 10 years or so. He had had leukemia, sadly, and uh, finally died uh, a couple of weeks ago. And what I thought I would do here tonight, you've seen him many times on, on uh, this program, and I'm going to show you, I think it's his uh, second appearance on the old Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. You remember when Johnny had the show? Of course, yeah, I do. I remember. <laughs> And it was, no. it's like the Paul McCartney joke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He used to be in a different group before yeah, Wing. That's yeah. right, yeah. Um, so, uh, but, but in those days when we were all just kids and we were starting out in comedy, the most important thing you could do was go on that show and do well and make Johnny laugh. That's all you cared about if you were a comic, was getting on The Tonight Show and, and being on there, and Johnny would say your name, and he would introduce you, and you would walk out, and then you would get to hear Johnny laugh. And if it worked that way, well, you were in heaven. Yeah. Because that, that meant everything was working, and, and the Lord was looking down on you, because that's really, that's all that counted. Johnny laughed at something you said, and, and my God, here you go. Yeah. So uh, I, I called the, the office in California and talked to our friend Peter LaSalle, and I said, do you mind if I just show one of George's early appearances from The Tonight Show with Johnny? And he said, by all means, go ahead. So we looked at a couple of them, and we picked them out. And I think this is actually George's second appearance, and uh, this is from The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, uh, July 20th. Uh, 1976, and when you know George, uh, the first thing when you see him, he looks like he's about 11 years old in this. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, here's our old friend, uh, George, uh, early, early appearance on The Tonight Show. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. George Miller is a uh, young comedian who was with us uh, a couple of months ago, and the audience liked him so much, we asked him to come back with us tonight. He's uh, got, a, got a delightful manner about him. Would you welcome, please, George Miller. George... <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, people ask you questions if they know you're in show business. They're curious. Sometimes they're nosy. They say, what did you do before? Or do you do anything else? I was working at a mail room for a long time, one of those big uh, motion picture studios. Sorting the mail from 9 to 5 was real boring. But uh, I found out there was a lot of fooling around going on. And if a guy was a good lover, the girls would call him a tin sinner. Say, Larry's a tin sinner, yeah? And if the guy was really good, they referred to him as a 13 sinner or air mail. <laughs> that's right, that's what they say. You have any idea what it feels like to be known as postage due? <laughs> you know what I couldn't do in high school? I couldn't make that stupid footstool in woodshop class. I finally got the thing made, but one leg was longer than the other leg and it wobbled. So I planed down the long leg and I got too much off. Now this leg was longer and it still wobbled. So I planed down this leg and I got too much off. Now this leg was longer. And then eventually it became a breadboard. 
Oh, maybe you saw this on the 11 o'clock news recently. They had a big meeting of concerned parents. And one guy got up and he says, well, I believe there's too much violence on television and in the movies. Then there was this woman at the meeting and she had to do the old cliche. Well, I would rather have my children see nudity than violence. Then there was this other guy. And he kept saying, well, wait a minute. Why can't we have both? <laughs> I'd like to see naked people beating the hell out of each other. <laughs> Any job I ever had, though, something would go wrong. Two years ago, I had a great show business job. I was the MC for Seals and Crofts, who were really a hot singing team. After one show, Seals and Crofts fired me because I had a few drinks, introduced them as arts and crafts. <laughs> Any kind of drug or alcohol will follow up whatever you're doing. Maybe you saw this on the front of the Times a few months ago. No, it was longer than that. It was about a year ago. Two guys got picked up. They had in their possession 100 pounds of angel dust, which is a hallucinogenic drug. But actually, what angel dust is, is an animal tranquilizer. So like if your cow gets high on speed, you can give him some angel dust and bring him back down. <laughs> That'd be neat, huh? Cow on speed. Moo, 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 moo. <laughs> really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs>
visited left me this fine china. Uh, I think yeah. anyone who's ever done any time will recognize this I sort think, of dishware. I think you're probably right. And, and of course, of course uh, uh, on our way out, we'll pass through. Oh, the mirror. You have oh, a mirror? The mirror some, yeah, once in a while, if I have nothing to do, I'll write uh, maybe somebody's name in blood on the mirror. Mm -hmm. so. It's fun for you. It's always and fun And the refrigerator, me. always a source of fun. Eating is one of my greatest pleasures in life. My favorite uh, product of all time to eat, and I know it's yours too, is the Swanson's Hungry Man TV Dinner. TV dinner if there's anything yeah. I like when I'm really hungry, it's a thimble full of soup. Thimble full of soup. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been visiting George Miller, a rising young comedy star in his home on the uh, lovely Sunset Strip. George, uh, don't bother to show us out. Thank you very much. I, I certainly appreciate your time. Too bad the Donnie Most wasn't home. At this time, we're uh, quite excited to introduce another brand new feature never be see before <laughs> seen uh, on my mouth here. Uh, here with a weekly report, the first installment thereof from his room, the much sought after and celebrated comedian and late night correspondent, Mr. George Miller. Hi, this is George Miller. And this is my room right here. And I've lived here now for about six years in apartment 303. I used to live next door in apartment 304, but I moved because I wanted to be closer to town. You might notice that pile of stuff over there in the corner. A lot of people don't know it, but underneath that pile of stuff is singer-songwriter Eddie Rabbit. Eddie's taking a nap under there, but he'll be getting up and going home in a few minutes. Right here is a mirror where I write my name in blood once in a while just for something to do. I stay in this room almost all the time. Occasionally, I'll go out to Denny's or to my mother's for a hot tub bath, but then it's right back here to my room after about a half an hour or so. I'm really living on the edge. This is my new watch here. It has no numbers and no hands. It's for people who don't have any activities at all. I haven't always lived here. I was brought up in the little town of Squirt, Washington. Squirt is a very unusual town. It has a population of about 175 people, and everyone in the town is named Roland. I went to Squirt High School where Mr. Parks, Roland Parks that is, was my favorite teacher. He taught history and had some very unusual theories on the subject. Like Mr. Parks always claimed that Abraham Lincoln was never really assassinated, that he just had the wind knocked out of him. After high school, I worked as a prison guard at San Quentin for nine years. I finally quit. I don't know, it just wasn't fun anymore. I like to think I'm a very sensitive person. For example, last Wednesday, I was up all night and I saw the sun rise. And it was such a beautiful sight, and I'm so sensitive that I just had to call and tell 25 or 30 people who would have been getting up in a couple of hours anyway. I don't plan to spend the rest of my life in this room, by the way. I hope eventually to join my Uncle Lewis. He's eccentric, but very independent. He's almost 80, but he lives by himself. He has his own little apartment there in the Texas School Book Depository. One thing about me is I hate doing work that I find out later I could have gotten out of. Like if I wash my car and then it rains. I have this recurring nightmare that I'm going to die with my bed made. I mean, things like that happen every day. And they wonder why a decent man gets angry. This is George Miller, and I'm still in my room. He really is still in his room. Coming up in the next half hour, uh, Henry Aaron will be here, Irving Caesar, and Alan Alda, a man and his Chinese food. We'll be right back. Show. Well, last week we announced that we were going to have the second installment in a series of reports from the room of George Miller, and because we were running late and having way too much fun, we had to postpone it until this evening. So, once again, here with one of his weekly reports from his room, the much sought after and celebrated comedian, George Miller. Hi, this is George Miller, and this is my room right here. 
And in spite of my busy schedule, I always try to find time each day to watch plenty of television. Right here, this is my home entertainment center. And I've always liked the talk shows the best, I guess. Uh, Mer Griffin was great today. He had one of those theme shows. His guests were Mickey Rooney, Shelley Winters, and Mariette Hartley. The theme was actors who think they are interesting. <laughs> and I saw the Phil Donahue show this morning. The subject was depression. There weren't any guests. I guess everybody was too bummed out to show up. <laughs> One of the things I like about the talk shows is you get to see people you wouldn't ordinarily see. Like, I was watching Hugh Hefner being interviewed the other day, and I've always liked the Playboy Advisor because they have great questions like, uh, the man I've been living with for the past eight years has an incurable disease. How can I break the news to him? Also, can you tell me a good way to clean my stereo records? <laughs> and I always look forward to an appearance by William F. Buckley. You know what I always wanted to do is to get his private phone number and to call him up and say, listen, you don't know me, but I fell asleep during the last 20 minutes of the Dukes of Hazard, and I was wondering if you could kind of fill me in. <laughs> and I noticed that Jack LaLanne and Richard Simmons have their programs on early in the morning. I mean, if you're in good enough condition to get up at that hour, what do you need with those guys? I guess I'm kind of partial to the game shows because my cousin won a lot of money on one of them. It was a Kind of a strange show, he won $40,000. His category was fat people who have nothing to live for. <laughs> you have to watch television carefully, I think, because the scenes change so fast. Like recently, I watched an important report on the danger of nuclear mishaps, and all of a sudden, there was the founder of Wendy's. And I don't like it when television tries to trick us. Like, they always call it Request Playhouse or Encore Theater. How about Crummy Repeat? Encore theater. There's something you see a lot of. People standing up at the end of a TV show yelling, Encore, Encore. <laughs> Request Playhouse. Encore theater. And they wonder why a decent man gets angry. This is George Miller, and I'm still in my room. George Miller, and he's still in his room. Uh, we have to pause now for station identification. Coming up in the next half hour, comedian Franklin Ajayi and the gentleman who is the curator of the Potato Museum, Tom Hughes. We'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Once again, it's time for our weekly report from our good friend George Miller. George Miller's weekly report, I'm repeating myself and I know it, once again, George Miller from his room. <laughs> Hi, this is George Miller, and this is my room right here. On a talk show recently, somebody mentioned that Edie Gourmet was once asked how she and Steve Lawrence had stayed married for so many years. And supposedly, Edie said, because we've never had an in-depth conversation. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I do know that a lot of couples make the same mistake of not getting to know each other very well. Like, the people next door to me have been married for eight years, and the other night I heard him say to her, Honey, let's go out to a restaurant for dinner tonight. You don't cook at all, do you? I think the worst thing that can happen to a relationship is when two people fail to trust each other. I had a girlfriend a few years ago and we were both very suspicious. One year for Christmas, we gave each other sodium pentothal. Certain guys have different approaches to meeting women. A friend of mine, no matter what the situation, will go up to a girl he's never seen before and he always says the same thing. Aren't you the daughter of circus people? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think a good strategy on a first date is to make this statement. Well, I'm certainly not perfect. God knows I've got my faults. See, this gives you leeway if you want to be a jerk later in the evening. <laughs> I don't think any man knows for sure if he's going to score or not. But I'll tell you, if she starts talking about priorities, you can be sure there's not a chance in hell. Priorities <laughs> will stop you every time. <laughs> well, I've got to go now. I've got a lot of things to do. I always spend a couple of hours each day rehearsing what I'm going to say to my ex-girlfriend if I should ever run into her again. But I would like to leave you with this thought. Be considerate. The most important thing in any relationship is consideration of the other person's feelings. Like, I called up this girl I was dating who was in the hospital, and I told her I'd come visit her on Monday. 
She said she'd be going home on Sunday. I said, well, can't you stay an extra day? She said, no. Boy, some people have no consideration. I mean, things like that happen, and they wonder why a decent man gets angry. This is George Miller, and I'm still in my room. Thank you so much. George Miller, coming up next, Chaz Chase, a guy who eats things. We'll be right back. And now, once again, here with his report from his room, the much sought after and celebrated comedian and late night correspondent, your friend and mine, George Miller. Hi, this is George Miller, and this is my room. I was thinking, you hear a lot of discussion lately about food, what to eat, what not to eat. I've tried to be more nutrition conscious myself the last few years. For example, I always use this light salt. It says it has a half the sodium of regular table salt. But that's no problem, I just use twice as much. <laughs> I think a lot of people, they think that frozen foods are not real good for you, but my favorite product of all time is the frozen hungry man TV dinner. I mean, if there's anything I want when I'm really hungry, it's a thimble full of soup. <laughs> I used to have a friend who was a fanatic about nutrition. One time we were watching The Man with the Golden Arm where Frank Sinatra kicks heroin by going cold turkey and then crave sugar and eat some of it. Now my friend, who hadn't said anything at all about the heroin, saw the sugar and yelled, that stuff will kill you. They say the key to good health is a good breakfast, but I've never really liked breakfast foods and I've never understood the concept of breakfast in bed. I mean, somebody wakes you out of a sound sleep early in the morning and the first thing you're supposed to do is eat eggs. <laughs> Until a few years ago, I didn't know what a continental breakfast was. It sounds real fancy, a continental breakfast. I found out it's a roll in coffee. It's the same breakfast you'd get if you were in prison. I always enjoy holly, holiday food. Every year, my mom and I invite three or four men from a rescue mission who don't have any relatives here in town at Christmas or Thanksgiving. And when we say the blessing, I always give thanks that I won't have to eat my other meals with these guys. I remember a few years ago, if you were a Catholic and you ate meat on Friday, it was considered a sin. You're going to get it, with the exception of turkey roll, which is, of course, a punishment in itself. <laughs> and I guess I probably eat at fast food franchises too often, and people make a lot of fun of these places, like Colonel Sanders and McDonald's, but I think we should honor them. They give young, slow, stupid people a place to work. <laughs> And I've noticed that a lot of first-class restaurants have grubby names lately, like the Dirty Cellar or the Filthy Pig. I was talking about this with a friend of mine. He owns a very swank restaurant in Beverly Hills, the Roach-Infested Hell Hole. I guess maybe I just think about food too much. Like when my father died at the after-burial buffet, I noticed that my brother hogged the mashed potatoes. He had at least three helpings. Can you imagine three helpings? And they wonder why a decent man gets angry. This is George Miller, and I'm still in my room. Thank you so much, George. Uh, we're going to pause. We'll be right back with Ray Geiger, the publisher of the Farmer's Almanac. Uh -huh. Hi there. Uh, in the past month, uh, we've presented several special reports from George Miller's room. Well, tonight is a very special night for us. George is out of his room, and he's with us right here in the studio. Please welcome a very funny man, a good friend of mine, out of his room, George Miller. Now that, uh, uh, I have to remember not to sit with my legs open like I have done on some other shows. Excuse why is, me. Why is that? Well, it looks like hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a, yeah. And kids shouldn't try that at home either, that's, I guess. That's no. true. Um, 
Now, I want to tell you, I, we've certainly enjoyed having your reports from your little room oh. there, and uh, you're, you're out of your room. You're I am in out. The Big Apple. The Big Apple. I'm here. I'm out here on with, the streets. Here with my uncles, who I'll talk to you about in a minute. We went to, uh, first of all, I wanted to plug the Pittsburgh Comedy Club where I was. Really? Now, that's more response than I ever got at the Pittsburgh Comedy Club. <laughs> it was like dead hogs in sunshine, boy. I'm telling you, it was... But <laughs> I wanted to plug them because they're very nice yeah. people. That and, must have uh, been your farewell performance, that is that right? That was Yeah, I won't be going back there. <laughs> but uh, we came, uh, well, I got here on Sunday, and we went to Catch a Rising Star. Yeah. And I know you've been there. And then there was a place across the uh, street, Snub a Bombing Has Been. We went uh -huh. over there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you people have been there, right? And uh, it was, there's so much talent in this town, you just can't believe it. We no. saw a guy who was kind of like Rip Taylor, only without the good material. Yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Terrific. But you have, you have relatives here, we though. We have huh? relatives. We went to, um, you were on, the, what was it, the Night of a Hundred Stars. That's right, right the Night right. of a Hundred Stars. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. I saw you on that. And then yesterday, I don't know why you weren't there, we went to Central Park, and they had the, uh, what was it, the afternoon of, uh, or the picnic of a hundred uh, stars. It picnic was, of a hundred stars, It was yeah. great. They had the same people, the same famous people that had been on. They had potato sack races and volleyball and uh, <laughs> celebrities who are really looking old competition. It was, a, <laughs> it was a wonderful night. And then last night, one more thing, the, the thing we did last night, we went to the uh, Hungry Wart East. Hungry Wart yeah, East. Yeah, and we, of course, uh -huh. met at the Hungry Wart West many years ago. Uh -huh. And we saw an uh, unbelievable, it was an Elvis impersonator. And as you know, I'm kind of like Andy Kaufman in that I just worship Elvis, and any time I watch one of his movies, I always take a whole bunch of different kinds of drugs. I know Elvis would have wanted it that way. Uh, uh, he applause. I got applause already. Isn't that interesting? So, so uh... <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my relatives are in town. Were you going to ask me about my relatives? Your relatives. You got yeah. some relatives in... Uh... Uncle Paul is here and Uncle Lewis. Uncle Paul, of course, I've talked to you many times before, is a uh, born-again Christian, which means he used to be a thief in government. <laughs> and uh, we have... Uh, <laughs> and we have my Uncle Lewis, who is a kind of a guy... He really is a guy that uh, needs religion. He's the kind of a guy, I think, if uh, you were having shock treatment, and, you know, to try to erase some of the terrible memories from your mind. Lewis is the kind of a guy who would love to fill you in. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Remind you of the ugly past, huh? That's right. Yeah. And he's an attorney, of course, yeah. and, as I've told you. And, uh, in fact, last year, this was unbelievable, he represented me, his own nephew, in a court case and tells me to shut my face. Yeah. I said, hey, I said, don't give me any of that legal mumbo jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> My Uncle Ray uh, did away with himself. Oh, this I did, is, This yeah. is serious. My uncle is actually R.C., Ray Calvin, up in Federal Way, Washington. And he did away with himself because, I don't know, have you ever heard of this depression over poor penmanship? <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least they think that's what the suicide note said. They're not sure. It was, uh, it was pretty messy. They don't... Uh, so anyway, we've been having a having very a good, good time. time. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you do? Now, I, of course, know what you did before you got into show business. You and I are old friends, but uh, right. I'm sure that there's going to be a huge clamor here for, for this information. So tell us. Well, I, did, I actually uh, uh, hustled pool for a couple of years in Seattle and also in San Francisco. And in those days, uh, it sounds like a joke, but my two favorite activities were uh, pool and sex. Mm -hmm. those, yeah, sex was better because you don't have to keep one foot on the floor. But... Uh, <laughs> I did. I played a lot of pool at the uh -huh. Greenfelt and the 211 Club in Seattle, and uh, so I did that. I also had a lot of regular jobs. And have you ever had a regular job? Uh, yeah. Not yeah. recently. No, 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 I know. Not recently. And uh, I worked... Well, one thing about me is that uh, I was very conscientious when I worked uh, 9 to 5. I, I would call in sick to places I didn't even work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one thing. And... Uh, <laughs> try that sometime. And... <laughs> I saw a thing in the paper, maybe you saw this, or maybe you didn't, that, w that sometimes, like, judges now, because of people's jobs, will actually, if you're caught for, like, a minor offense, they'll allow you to serve your time with weekends in jail, mm -hmm. which I think is really good. It, uh, you know, allows you to continue stealing from your employer Monday through Friday. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's very good. And uh, so I worked at American Can Company, and I worked at a, a Dolly Madison Bakery, very uh -huh. unsanitary place in Los Angeles. Well, you for can't. A while. Yeah, I don't no, think you can say that. No, you couldn't that. say that. No, <laughs> no. Have you ever tried their zingers? The Dolly Madison zingers. Zingers, yeah, no. yeah. Well, they're good, but they are. Uh, 
are what? Unsanitary. Well, you said we couldn't say that. Well, you can't now. We've got a crew of about eight people are going to have to stay late here tonight because you said that. Oh, that's too bad. Well, what about the son of a bitch that the guy before me said? What's that going to do? Yeah, come to think of it, that's right. That's right. They had to be here anyway. Yeah. Say anything you want. Unless we got a nude woman back I there. Too. I forgot about that. The whole that. show's going to hell. <laughs> Uh, you're right. That's the least of our Can concerns. Can I do some plugs? Since we're all off the beaten path anyway, I'm going to be at the Comedy Boat in Tucson, April 22nd. I thought I was going to say Love Boat by mistake. It's the Comedy the, Boat the in comedy Tucson. Comedy Boat. Yeah, the 22nd of April through the 25th. Uh, Murray Langston, the unknown comic. Will you be flying in again for that one? Yeah. Oh, like you did in Cleveland the and Pittsburgh, The Comedy right? yeah. Boat. And also... I guess uh, call Ticketron as soon as you can. <laughs> These seats won't last long, ladies and gentlemen, to the comedy boat. And also the comedy and magic club in Hermosa Beach, April 6th. That's a, that's a fine club, uh, Yeah, the through the 10th. You've been there and before. so is the comedy boat. Yes. Uh, we have to pause. We're not coming. No, we're coming back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. My next guest, a very funny man and a good friend. If you've watched our show uh, in the beginning of the season, you'll remember that uh, he did a series of reports from his room. Well, tonight, he's back. We've got him here in person, our studio. You know him, you love him, you can't live without him. Please welcome George Miller. Hi, George. Hi, nice to see you. How are you doing? Thank you very Don't much for coming. about my uh, pillowcase uh, sweatshirt here. That's not. So you uh, always look very casual. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's very nice. It's uh, wh how would you describe There's that? Semi snotty staff over there laughing already. <laughs> how would you describe what you have this on? Is Every a this is a velour that my ex girlfriend uh, gave me. Uh huh. That's very nice. Every article of clothing uh, romantically connected somehow. Uh, yeah, the shoes were uh, from a Filipino girl in the islands about four years ago, <laughs> and uh, we won't even go into the pants. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good policy. <laughs> Don't go into the pants. Um, we can uh, see ourselves up there. Yeah, we, we have I didn't a show notice to, that no, the last We have time. a show to do here. Yeah, I know we, we do. You can look at it later. <laughs> we wouldn't know it thus far, but I know um, we do. Now, the last time, last time you were here, you talked about uh, before you were in show business, you had a series of regular jobs before you. That's absolutely true. And you know, some people, it's like they dislike going to work. But with me, it was like really like dread, hatred, like we've all thought what it would be like if a nuclear bomb fell on our country. But yeah. had that, I used to view this in terms of another opportunity to miss work. Mm -hmm. It was like that. If and the bomb probably, dropped, then you'd, the bomb yeah, dropped, stay home. Would, yeah, stay home, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to explain these. This is big time entertainment. <laughs> uh, I got a job selling shoes was probably my uh, worst job. I was fired from that job. A guy came in one day, and he had unusually big feet, and he got real mad when I asked if I could show him something in a canoe. So that was my... <laughs> that was uh, really the end of my regular job experience. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, you wrote some songs? I wrote a few songs. Well, actually, I wrote, uh, I would like to say I wrote like 4,000 songs. I actually only wrote two. The, uh, yeah, the very complex, I forgot to remember that I'm stupid. That was mm -hmm. my first song. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you remember that one? No, I guess you've forgotten. And then uh, the more philosophical, he ain't heavy, I'm on uppers. That was my uh, second uh, number that I wrote. It was, uh, of course, my favorite singer of all times. As you know, I've told you this many times, and my inspiration was James Taylor. I love the words to James Taylor's songs. I seen fire and I seen rain. I mean, the guy's really been around. Yeah. He's really uh, <laughs> all over the place. And there we are again up there. That's I right. can't take our eyes yeah. off ourselves. Um, now, the just you and me on that one, yeah. Now, the last time uh, you were here, you uh, you flew in from California and you had some problems traveling. A lot, lot of problems. And I, I probably am speaking out of turn. I probably shouldn't say this, but NBC has not given late night with David Letterman. I like to say my, uh, your name almost as much as you do. Um, <laughs> I, my name, your name, whoever's name. Uh, they, you don't, you're not on a big budget. And I figured that when I got the plane tickets in the mail. I had never heard of Ronco Airlines before. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> some applause for Ronco. And, but I will say... It's a subsidiary of Popeil, I believe, isn't it? <laughs> I think you're right with Illyria yeah. and so forth. But, uh, yeah, I, it's only like $9 from coast to coast, which I thought was 
very, very reasonable. Although, I, again, I had never flown from Los Angeles to New York by way of the tundra. That was the first time that that had happened. And of course, there uh, are restrictions on the, uh, the low budget fares. And believe me, it's no fun having to sit at the airport and be there two and a half months before takeoff. No, it's just uh, not no. the best thing. And they don't call your program the J.P. Stevens of entertainment for nothing. So I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the company represented in the movie uh, Norma Ray. Yeah, so it's, it's been a few years back. A few however. years back, yeah. right, yeah. right. Um, um, anyway, I wasn't through with my story, oh, so sorry. then I got to town. <laughs> I got to town, and most of the people, and today I am staying at the, what is the Burke Face Place or something no, the, like that? The Berkshire, Berkshire, Berkshire Place. Yeah, I know it's I'm at the Burke Face Classic Hotel. It is, it is I, I, that's right, and I know I'm at the Berkshire because I ordered a roast beef sandwich from room service, and it was $1,500, so I know <laughs> I am at the, uh, the Berkshire. But well, last you time, you stay at a Dunphy Classic, you pay for you the pay, little extra like mind, a sandwich. I didn't mind at all. It's and a fine hotel. Last time, it's a wonderful hotel, and uh, yeah, I think we've redeemed ourselves now. The last time, I guess the budget, <laughs> the budget was even lower though, because they took me directly to the Bowery, where I checked into the Hotel Ace, which I had <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it wasn't bad though. It wasn't bad. There was a restaurant right there in uh, the hotel, in the and hotel. I knew it was going to be good because the name of the place was Eat. You yeah. can always pretty well. <laughs> That's a tip always, off. Yeah, and I think the thing that we all really look for in a first-rate hotel is plastic drinking glasses. I think yeah, that, yeah, especially when they've been bolted down and you have to slurp like a dog. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> but things are better now at the Berkshire, well, so I am, uh, I am over here. But I don't like travel in general. That's don't, absolutely don't care for yeah. the travel. You don't see many guys who go like this quite a bit. No, you don't. There, look, George, there we We're are there, again. We're all again, yeah. yeah. God, my hair looks like hell, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Now, I, I know that when you travel, you uh, generally, <laughs> you like to ride a motorcycle. I, uh, no, I used to. Oh, I used you used to. to? I used to. Yeah, I had a motorcycle for a couple of years, and then I sold it to a motorcycle gang. They uh -huh. gave me $3 plus a savage beating, so that was <laughs> a pretty good yeah. deal. Yeah, no, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all, actually. Yeah, so. yeah. Now, I know you just came back from, you had a, a, an engagement <laughs> at the, in Tucson at the Comedy Boat. Comedy Boat, I was uh -huh. there, right, in, yeah. in Tucson. Booked and by the unknown comic, by the way. Right. It's, and uh, do, when you go into a, a town like Tucson, do you read the, the local papers? I read a lot of stuff. I, well, I don't really read a lot of stuff. I scan things in the paper for interest and possible uh, material. I, what I was really interested in this week, of course, was uh, John Hinckley Jr. I, I guess he's pleading insanity, just in case you, you don't know. It's uh, the person who allegedly took the shots at President Reagan. And he's been in jail now since that time, and he's tried suicide on, I think, two different occasions, which I don't understand. I mean, here's a man with everything to live for. I don't know why he would throw that away. And, uh, yeah. And, well, what was it? The first time he took, like, 148 Tylenol, and they did not kill him? And I, yeah, I believe he still had a headache, too. I'm not sure. But he, uh... I thought it was real interesting because he followed Jodie Foster around the country for two years. Now you which did. Didn't I you did the did same thing with Kay Ballard, so I can't yeah. really say anything. I, you know, it's not for me to say, yeah. but I, I do do a lot of reading. What, uh, but, uh, what do you have planned for after the big show tonight? After the show, uh, I was maybe going to get high and try to pronounce the name of that midget who plays on Fantasy Island, something <laughs> like uh, that. Or maybe drive around Times Square and uh, give the finger to Vagrant, something like that. I don't know for sure, but... Uh, well, it's a full life for you. Isn't yeah, it? I just never stop. Now, do you want to mention where you're going to be? You got a couple oh, of gigs uh, coming up. Didn't you read? Did you no, read I didn't, that in the thing? I didn't okay, read that. I work at the Improv and the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, and next week uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Excuse Los me. Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah, shut the hell up. Uh, <laughs> and next week I'll be from the fifth to the eighth of May at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. Come out and see me, and it'll fool you, uh, the people into thinking that I draw. And then the following week, the eleventh to the fifteenth, at the Ice House in Pasadena. Did I get it all? We'll be right back with sex therapist Dr. Ruth Westheimer. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hiram. My next guest is a very funny man and a good friend, and he used to drive for Don King. Please welcome a very funny gentleman, Mr. George Miller. Gloria, 
You know, you look, I haven't seen you in a couple of months. You look good. You look fit. You look trim. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I'm actually a little overweight and don't feel too good. Oh, uh, <laughs> you, you look fine, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's deceptive. I, I know you were up in uh, Seattle for a big family reunion. Oh, that was wonderful. I have to tell you about that because uh, we had all the relatives, a tremendous amount of relatives up there. And my mother, of course, lives in Seattle. I live in Los Angeles, even though I'm supposedly grown up, I still talk to her every day on the telephone. Okay. You know how it is, you've got to keep that guilt flowing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my fa have you ever, You've never met my father, have you? No, I never my have. My father's kind of like Art Buckwald, only without the sex appeal, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Art, he was on your show, wasn't Art he? Art was on the show, Another yes. one of your spellbinding guests, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> see, the problem, the problem with the family is we all have these, I don't know, characteristics, or maybe you'd call them even quirks. Quirks? Yeah, like with me, I don't know what it is. I always have to weigh myself just before a suicide attempt. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> call it superstition. I don't know what it is. But uh, we had some big time entertainment at the reunion. At we the had reunion. A, lot, a lot of relatives, so we had a lot of money to spend. We had Willie Nelson was there, wow. and I got to meet him. No, really, he was a really a nice guy and a great singer. I mean, and for a man who always looks like he needs to be vacuumed, I think that... Uh, <laughs> was a wonderful thing and of course you know uh, catfish hunter is he was uh, there? a member of our not a member a friend friend of the say, family member almost a member uh -huh. of our family close and friend he, a very close friend mm -hmm. he came up there catfish hunter he was with his friend dog meat johnson mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> they're every place together and uh did you know like my mom and my dad and myself got into another argument because uh see actually i was like a mistake I guess I shouldn't say that on the air, but I w they had wanted a dog, and there was some kind of a mix-up. I don't know what happened. And, uh, no, as I was growing up, any time I got sick, they would always give me an aspirin hidden inside a wiener. So I was pretty sure that s something was wrong there. And uh, well, one year they boy. hid my Easter basket on the freeway and gave me real good clues. So you yeah. know that... Uh, Probably not too. Things pleased, were out there. Yeah. So that was the family reunion. So it, was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, that's good. It was a lot of fun. Now yeah. you, uh, you've you been keeping abreast of the current developments. Oh, a lot of things. Yeah. You, you watch, you read newspapers or watch oh, TV or both? I got or? newspapers here in my pocket. Not the actual newspaper, mm -hmm. but little clips Clippings. from them. A lot of these politicians are down on the video games. They think that the kids are wasting their money and their time. What they should be concerned about is this new board game, Hernia. Have you heard about the new? No. It's kind of like Monopoly, but the dice weigh 100 pounds apiece. <laughs> And uh, I got some stuff. Oh, and how about that, John Hankley? What a crazy guy. <laughs> but uh, these, I guess, these would be are, your these clippings. Are things, yeah, these are clippings, uh -huh. right. That was mm -hmm. good. Uh, this is from uh, Variety, the show business newspaper <clears throat> yesterday in the Help Wanted section. I thought this was kind of interesting. Deaf Mutes Wanted for New Motion Picture, auditions Tuesday and Wednesday. No phone calls, please. <laughs> And uh, are you hip to Jim Thorpe, the golfer? He's doing pretty well nowadays. And uh, that's the same name as the famous, famous Indian, athlete Indian athlete. Of, yes. uh, yeah, of, uh, <laughs> you're saying what I'm saying. Of uh, many years ago. So somebody writes in, I couldn't believe this. Jim Thorpe, the golfer, should change his name. People will think he's trying to cash in on the success of the man with the same name who preceded him. And it's signed Elvis Costello. <laughs> I have one more. I have another little item there for us. Yeah, this is my favorite uh, Dear Abby letter of all time. Just in case you've never read Dear Abby, she writes a column for a lot of morons from around the country who can't <laughs> solve their own problems. They write in and seek advice on this one central. It's a wonderful <laughs> column. And, uh, <laughs> now, don't bleep that out because she's not really a central. And she gives wonderful advice, some of it more than once. Uh, <laughs> This is a letter from a John Smith. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a dramatic letter. I'll try to read it dramatically. Dear Abby, I work in a sewer. <laughs> because the work is so depressing, I started taking pet pills. I got hooked. My life was a living hell. <laughs> then one night, with God's help and all the courage I could muster, I flushed those horrible pills down the toilet once and for all. But the next day, when I went back to work in the sewer, there they were again. You know, uh, you seem like such an easygoing guy. Yeah, I'm really quite hyper. Yeah. Um, are you, you enjoying yourself in New York so far? Oh, yeah. I love yeah. New York. We're at the Berkshire 
face again. Place, the place. Butcher place. It's no, a Dunphy yeah. Classic. Dunphy Classic. It's a one, and I made jokes about it the last time. It's a wonderful what is hotel. The, it's what about is one the, notch above the Y. What? what? <laughs> it's a fine hotel. What is, fine hotel. What is the room number over there, George? Where that's, you're uh, that's 1002. 1002, okay. Yeah. I wonder if the guy in 1002 is going to get a lot of calls tonight. <laughs> Now, uh, what I was getting around to earlier, you seem like such an easygoing <laughs> fellow, but I'm guessing there probably you have some pet irritations, things that oh, really bother of, you. Oh, a lot of irritations. You know what I really hate is stupid advice. Stupid I don't advice. Like, the other day I'm talking to this guy. I didn't know him hardy at all. We're talking along. He says to me, you know what you should really do? Want to make some money? You rob a bank. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've always wanted to do. Rob a bank and be sent to prison where I can be the new blonde-haired guy. Yeah, that would be... Uh, <laughs> That would be just... And I couldn't hang myself. I'm not mechanically inclined, so it just wouldn't work out at all. Uh, now, I know you, uh, you're, 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 you work... You're one of the busiest comics oh, in America. Oh, just so busy. And the, just so busy. The last time... One of the last times... You I were, hardly have time to do this. One of the last times... <laughs> One of the last times you were here, you were ready to go to a place in uh, Yuma called the Comedy Boat. That's Tucson. Tucson, Tucson the, the Comedy, Comedy Boat. Boat. Yeah, now, we've been plugging them on every show. Now, where are you, where are you going now? I'll where be going at the Ice House in Pasadena, the 7th of the 10th through July, and then uh -huh. I'll be on to the Detroit Comedy Castle. The Comedy Castle yeah, this time, huh? Comedy, Comedy Castle, similar to the Laughing Canoe. I the think. Laughing <laughs> Canoe. Yeah, uh -huh. and that'll be the 14th through the 19th of July. Yeah, and, when, so. and so you're going back to uh, Los Angeles soon? Yes, I'll be back there in my room very soon. Los Angeles, Los, say it. Yeah, uh, say we, it. We did this last no, time. No, say it, Los Angeles. I live in San Diego now. I don't have to say it. <laughs> You know what I was doing the other night? I was just kind of sitting around home, just quiet evening at home, just sitting there trying to forget about the stench of Watergate. <laughs> and uh, I was watching the Billy Graham crusade. Do you, do you watch him? Oh, I'm telling you, that man is, he's mesmerizing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you have never seen him in a nightclub, be <laughs> sure. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Just well, wonderful. Thank you for being here. Oh, well, thank you for having and, me. And uh, come back and see us real okay, soon. Okay, certainly After your will. gig at the Comedy okay. Castle, was it? It's ca Palace. Comedy Castle. Palace. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to pause, but we'll return with uh, Dan Greenberg. back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Christmas is a time to spend with both friends and relatives, and my next guest is neither. No, we're just kidding here. Here to spread his uh, very own version of holiday cheer, our friend and comedian, George Miller. You know, the Christmas holidays are supposed to be a joyous occasion, but many people get depressed around that time of the year. Now, I don't think that's so bad. In fact, I think if you're going to feel lousy around Christmas, you should go all the way and deliberately do things that will make you as miserable as possible. This eliminates confusion and the hope that things will get better. So here are just a few uh, suggestions to add to your holiday depression. Always try to spend Christmas Eve riding on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> If this is impossible, try to be living in real seedy quarters on Christmas Eve. The Ace Hotel would be a good choice. For dinner on Christmas Day, have vending machine snacks, or go out to the restaurant or to the airport by yourself and have dinner at a host restaurant. Try to be at a laundromat on both Christmas and Christmas Eve. If you have time after finishing your wash, don't forget to attend a pornographic movie by yourself, of course. Now this is very important. Plan things so you will be coming down off speed about 8 o'clock on Christmas Eve. That horrible feeling will add extra depression in almost any situation. At about 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve, try to watch an outdated rerun of Meet the Press. Listen to Mel Tillis sing, Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town, about 15 or 20 times. In Christmas Eve, by playing that most demanding of all card games, Solitaire. <laughs> On Christmas Day, call up bowling alleys and ask them to page anybody. <laughs> and for your New Year's resolution, vow to continue living in the past. 
Remember, these are just suggestions. You may be able to come up with depressing ideas of your own. If you do, send them along to me so I can use them too. After all, Christmas is a time of the year we should all share. Thank you. Hi, Greg. Hi, Dave. It's very nice. Oh, it's just, uh, oh, kind of moist me up there a little bit. That's fantastic. Yeah, golly. How, how did you uh, develop such a strange attitude toward the holiday season? I think originally, this was in, I'll never forget this, in first grade, we're like six years old, and Mr. Ogden, our first grade teacher, I think the day before the Christmas vacation started, announced to the class, there's no Santa Claus and there's no Easter Bunny. However, Hitler is alive. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, that was probably it. And there have been other occasions, probably I guess the worst Christmas Eve I spent was I was on the road and my car broke down and I had to get a uh, used car. Mm -hmm. And I spent the entire Christmas Eve over at Jack Ruby Pontiac, which uh, <laughs> not the best Christmas Eve that, that you could hope to spend. He, he was a Pontiac dealer? He was a Pontiac dealer at one time. Yeah. One, one time. Then he had other experiences yeah. later on in his life. <laughs> Jack Ruby Pontiac. You didn't know that, huh? No, I didn't know he was. I'm just an educational bundle. But he had a Ford agency there for No, a while. no, it was it was Pontiac. Pontiac. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, my I'm mother always, uh, well, one th this is like an upbeat because that was all kind of negative. My, my mother and I always try to have at least three or four unfortunates over to the, uh, to the house on Christmas Day. Uh, men and women who have no friends or relatives. And uh, whenever we say the, you know, the holiday blessing, I always try to give special thanks that I don't have to eat the rest of my meals with these people. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of a softy, huh? Yeah, you know, we were talking, you guys were talking about this, uh, <laughs> well, let's not get into that now. But uh, you guys were talking earlier about the, uh, the uh, commercialization of Christmas, oh, which I just hate. hate I that. think that the, the, uh, the S's in Christmas have been replaced by dollar signs, mm -hmm. and it just makes me sick to my stomach. <laughs> Thought I'd do a little acting there. Yeah, you did a nice job. Along. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, I noticed when you travel, uh, you're out here again from your home in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, you, Los Angeles. you watch a lot of television. A I lot know, of TV. I was going to talk about that the last time. That's mm -hmm. right, a lot of TV. And uh, I wanted to give a plug to the TV Guide, since they never give a plug to me whenever I'm on any uh -huh. program. And uh, you always know what's going on. Like, my, I'm really into, which, by the way, I love to say mm -hmm. into. I'm really, uh, <laughs> I'm really into the people's court. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you too? Yeah, you too. And, uh, yeah, tonight I have to hurry home, in fact, after the show, because they're having the case of the bumped sausage man. And I, I live <laughs> right up there with a Scopes trial in Sacco Vanzetti. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to watch that. And also, TV Guide, I just read this, that uh, uh, Goofy and Daffy Duck now have their own shows on Saturday mm -hmm. morning television, which I, I think that's very good. I think it's important that little kids learn to identify with retarded animals. <laughs> so... Uh, we, and <laughs> my friend, I was going to mention this on the last show too, my friend Gordon McClee was with me backstage in the dressing room and I've been really getting into game shows recently <laughs> because of Gordon. Uh, he won a lot of money. He has tremendous knowledge in specific areas. He won $40,000 on a game show. His uh, category was athletes who have been charged with rape. <laughs> so... That's almost all of them, I believe, uh, at oh, this point in no, time. No, 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 no. A joke That's, there. Of course, it's a, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's interesting. And, uh, uh, <laughs> what I do, uh, what I do is, uh, do you, you watch the news, I know. I do? I've, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do, I watch the news every, see if you do this too. I watch the news every day at five o'clock. If a crime's been committed and the crook gets caught, I always think maybe I could have done better. Now, kidnapping is the best example. Kidnapping is always the same. They grab somebody from a prominent family, they ask a half a million bucks, the FBI is called and they get caught. Now see, what I would do, I would eliminate the FBI because I wouldn't mess around with anybody prominent. I'd kidnap maybe 5,000 ordinary people and demand six, seven dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would do it. 
That would do it. Now, we have to pause. I know you always like to mention your upcoming engagements. Oh, uh, I do. You, you comedians call them what? Gig, gig, gigs. Yeah, I'm gigs. really into gigs. Gigs, yeah. Yeah, I'll be at the Ice House in Pasadena That's tomorrow night. That's the new night. Ice House, That's isn't the it? new the Ice brand House. brand new Ice House. As opposed to the old Ice House, uh -huh. yeah. And that'll be July 10th tomorrow night, and I'll be at the Detroit Comedy Castle. The Comedy Castle, yeah, yes, uh, sir. the following week. Yeah. And I think good seats are still available so for that. So, so. folks, uh, <laughs> probably call Ticketron and make sure you get those tickets. And Yeah, well, thank you very much for celebrating your holiday with us. Merry uh, Christmas year. to you, too. Same to you, to sir. You and yours. Uh, George Miller, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to pause. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Corman is here, also actress and cult figure Viva will be joining us. And by the way, we do have the best studio audiences anywhere in North America. Now, they're, 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 they're good looking, they're intelligent, they're friendly, and uh, we couldn't be happier with the groups we get. Um, now, if you watch this program with any regularity, which, by the way, is the only way to watch it, um, <laughs> You're now quite familiar with my next guest, a charter member of the late night, <laughs> a charter member of the late night three timers club. It's always yes, it sets off a murmur in the crowd. It's always a pleasure to welcome him back for a few laughs. It says here. So if <laughs> if you're so inclined to go see this gentleman in person, it is now possible. He will be in Houston at the Laugh Stop. That's L A F F Stop. Please welcome comedian George Miller. It's always a pleasure to welcome you back. I know you were just in my home state of Indiana. Oh, it was wonderful. A place called Crackers. 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 And I, apparently it's the same neighborhood where you were brought up. It's on and, the north uh, side of the city, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what the address was because he drove me over there. But all I had to do was amazing. All I had to do was mention your name on stage and there was virtually no response. <laughs> That's not true. That's a lie because people would always, forever, ask me how you were doing mm -hmm. and how the show was doing, and I tell them you're doing fine. The show is fine, and you'll be joining Jimmy Swaggart on the cable very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and who is Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Swaggart? He's, a, he's, a pritch, he's a, one of those a television evangelists. Oh, television yeah, evangelists. My huh? idea of a joke. Oh, your yeah. idea of a joke. Yeah. And your mom came in. Mom, mom Letterman. Dorothy. Is it Dorothy? It is yeah. Dorothy. Oh, very nice lady. She's still corresponding with prisoners. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Really a nice person, and because uh, you always kind of, you know, you kind of make a joke about her once in a while, but she was uh, uh, very nice yeah. and feeling very, very well, uh -huh. and uh, I guess that methadone is really helping out. <laughs> And I wanted to congratulate you. I have never said this publicly, but you are doing an amazing job. You, this man, unbelievable. Is it, oh, I didn't want to go that far. What? I mean, I watch your minute. show. This is not going to be followed by some sort of insult. No, it, it certainly oh, isn't. Right. Because I want you to know, I do watch your. If I miss your show, I videotape it. I got the Betamax there, mm -hmm. and I catch it at a later date. I'm about 148 shows behind at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but I watched it tonight. You had the uh, the escalator races. Uh, elevator, uh, elevator. Certainly an important difference. And. Uh, <laughs> I watched the night you gave away the, what, the facial blotters. Facial blotters oh, and the fish sticks. That put me away. I was on the floor. Boy, whoever thought that up is a genius. That was wonderful. <laughs> and, of course, the topper was when you had the stupid pet tricks stupid and the dog tricks, relieved yeah. himself on the show. That was... Uh, <laughs> the show is almost too stimulating. It really is. <laughs> I'm really enjoying myself. Let me, uh, can I ask you a question here? Sure. Uh, it's I, your show. I, you know, I, I know you, that you made that very clear. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know that you had uh, an interesting uh, educational background. I did. You had an interesting. Was it a history teacher with some peculiar? I went there. Well, first of all, I attended the University of Washington, where I majored in registration. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was just there for two quarters, and then I had to leave. There was some confusion about a grade point average. Yeah. So then I, uh, <laughs> my professor at the University of Washington. Now, what was his name? Was Mr. Abrams. Mr. Abrams. And Mr. Abrams had some, I would say, very peculiar theories on uh, American history. Yeah. He always claimed that Abraham Lincoln was never really assassinated, that he just had the wind knocked out of him. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> very, uh, very No, not a widely uh, held theory. No, but, uh, no, not a lot of people know that. But uh, uh, another thing I was going to tell you, what was that? These are facial blotters. Oh, that's right. Here are the uh, late night uh, with David Letterman Boy, facial blotters. Is, I, We'd like you to have these, George, in like your that. many travels. Thank I'm you sure very much. How about a sponge? You got one of those sponges that you used to do? Yeah. Okay. When you go to Houston, give these out. All right, that'll be the 7th through the 12th of September. You didn't mention that. I'm working for Howard Marcus for $11 a show, so I'm very anxious to get down there. <laughs> but uh, I was doing quite a few comedy, because I want to tell you, I was in Detroit, and I did. I don't well, know if What's you've the ever... name of the club in Detroit? Well, that's the Comedy Castle. Oh, but where's, after... the, where's the Comedy Boat? The Comedy Boat is in... <laughs> Is in Phoenix. Yeah. Where's is the comedy Phoenix. hat? Where is the that comedy? <laughs> That's up in Squirt, Washington. Squirt, Squirt yeah. Washington. Yeah. <laughs> but what I wanted to tell you was that I did a political benefit. Have you ever done uh, one no, of those? No, I haven't done one of those. Well, it was for a, a congressman named Bob Carr, and they had a dinner for him. I didn't get to meet him right away because he was uh, busy in the back. He was practicing firm handshakes. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> but coming back on the airplane, I had lunch on the airplane. Sponge. Your sponge well, right you there. spare no you just, you, at no, all. You soak you? these in water before. Yeah, yeah. I have heard you yeah, explain This that is actually before. the sponge of the future. Uh, That's very nice. NASA used these extensively. Is that here. right? Oh, sure. Ah. Yeah. Okay, we've milked that. Now, uh, well, coming yeah. back on the airplane. You brought it up, the for heaven's sake. No, I brought up the facial water. Oh. I didn't give a damn about the sponge. <laughs> I had lunch on the airplane. The same thing happened to me. Anytime I eat lunch or dinner on an airplane, I burn my tongue on one of those piping hot rolls. It happens every time. <laughs> I, they and, really oh, ought to put a warning on those I'm things. I'm telling you, and fresh was, yeah. the, was the roll. I think oh. the last time that roll saw an oven was about 75, uh -huh. something like yeah. that. Uh -huh. But I burned my tongue, or as you would say, I scalded that sucker good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, let us do this, so we're going to pause I got for more. A no, we're coming right back. Don't you worry. We'll return with George Miller and later, Viva and Roger Corman. Legendary film director, producer Roger Corman will be here in a moment. Uh, he's actually here now, but he's not out in front. And uh, also cult figure Viva. Do you know, are you familiar with Viva? I have not heard of Viva. I remember Baby Jane Halls or yeah, many years she ago. She was one of, they worked together in the, uh, yeah. did movies with Andy Warhol. Right? Also recall Marco Polo from the uh, 1400s, I guess it was. <laughs> I just like to say that name, Marco Polo. I just... You're just yammering now, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Just uh, like in real life. Well, uh, no, Marco Polo is not here. Viva is here. Well, you'll get him eventually. You get everybody here. Uh, no, I don't want another sponge. No, no. Well, well, I wasn't even offering you well, this. I saw I'm going to give I, that okay. one to Viva. I'm sure that a, being a cult figure, she'd want a sponge. I bet she would. Yeah. Um, so, now how, how you're, you're traveling, working all, oh, the, all the big clubs. So damn busy. <laughs> what about the, your girl uh, friend? Do you have a girlfriend, George? Well, I'll tell you something. I'm just uh, really fed up with women. I don't mean to be, you know, anti-women, but I just, uh, they, they get you so that you just get so mad. And uh, I'm thinking, okay, the next time I have a hassle, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to be emotionally stable. I'm going to be mature from now on. Compared to me, Joyce Brothers is a walking time bomb, right? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work out that way. I have a hassle with a girl, and I say, okay, I'm going to get revenge. Juvenile, right, but I'm going to do it. And I never get revenge properly. No. So I say, I'm going to tell her a big lie. I'm going to shock her. I want to see her eyes bug out. I tell her, I says, I'm going to have a sex change. Oh. Yeah. She said, oh, really? How do you think you like being a man? Oh. Well. <laughs> You can't, no, you can't, can't win. beat him, no. no. And I go home, I go home right after this horrible incident, and I get a call from my ex-girlfriend, Bobby, who, uh, boy, oh boy, uh, she had to, t I haven't seen her for maybe eight months, and she had to tell me of her exploits. Apparently, she's been dating the Southwest. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, she always wanted to do that real kinky stuff, you know, I mean, real kinky, like she's queen of the Amazons, and I'm Mr. Bill, you know? I haven't, I haven't no, I don't know you, anything you didn't, about you didn't, that, okay. No. Well, I figured, thank you, I figured that uh, something was wrong the first time I ever dated her. We were at the beach. The first thing she does, she picks up a seashell, hands it to a complete stranger, and says, hold this up to your ear. You can hear your dead mother screaming. Ooh, oh, that's...
that's uh, that's ugly. That was not a nice thing to have no. happen. No. Did you ever do this as you're making love? You suddenly think to yourself, God, we're both undesirable. <laughs> um, you don't have to answer that. Oh, okay. That's all right. Now, I know uh, in your uh, traveling, uh, you're kind of uh, America's uh, favorite minstrel. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> You must get a, a chance to watch a lot of television. A lot of TV. I, I enjoy your television updates whenever yeah. you stop here in New York. Yeah, well, I, I love television. I'm always watching. And uh, the other night I was just kind of sitting around home. I was, I was kind of in a laid-back mood. I'm, <laughs> I'm really into being laid-back. Uh -huh. And uh, I was just kind of sitting there, typical evening to home for me, just sitting there thinking about Kenny Rogers' busy schedule. And, uh, <laughs> Don't you love to watch him on the talk shows? It's Mary Ann and the baby in my next tour. Yes, Kenny, wake me up when you leave, please. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen Kenny on no, the no, show. Okay. No, no, okay. He probably won't be here either. But, uh, and I watched one of those made-for-television movies, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was pretty good. Because mm -hmm. usually after you watch a made-for-TV movie, you say, okay, it's <laughs> over, I watched it, so what? Right. I'm now two hours closer to death. <laughs> <laughs> That's a kind of an up outlook. That's it? true. I want to. Can I talk about death for just a second? We have you okay? sixty of them. Okay, sixty seconds. I was uh, I was thinking, and I read about this in the paper. There was a man in Ohio, actually too lazy to die. Mm -hmm. 114 years old, too lazy. Apparently, what happens in order to die, you have to exert a tiny amount of energy when you go. Oh, and he won't do that. <laughs> Hard to believe. Um, I, hate to, I hate to have to call a halt to the proceedings, but I know before you leave, you always like to tell us, and I guess you're going to do it quickly now, what are you doing after the show? One well, night you were going to, out to give the finger to indigence, wasn't it? That's right, that's right. And why, I, yeah. Well, it's vagrants, but vagrants, indigence is okay. Sorry. Yeah, I basically do, you asked me this a few months ago, and I actually do the same thing every night. I get real, real drunk and try to pronounce the name of that midget who plays on Fantasy Island. <laughs> Did you know, this is true now, he was married at one time for, I guess I, to a, I, guess I can say, a normal size, very uh, young, attractive actress, and now they have, uh, they've uh, split up. Gee, I wonder what could have gone wrong. <laughs> It's George Miller, ladies and gentlemen. You know him, you love him. We'll be right back after this. Hello, I'm Larry Bud Melman with yet another of my five good reasons why you should ride Melman buses. Yet another number two. Riding backwards in a bus could cause motion sickness and other fatal diseases. That's why on Melman buses, all the seats face forward, the very same direction the bus is heading in. Melman buses, see where you're going, not where you've been. Schaefer, Hiram Bullock, Will Lee, and Steve Jordan, our band, and we're happy to have them here. Uh, my next guest is a very good friend of mine, and if you knew him, he'd be a friend of yours, too. He'll be opening at Tickles. I'll wait a minute while you get a piece of paper and a pencil to jot this down. He'll be opening at Tickles in Warren, Ohio, so for heaven's sakes, get there early. Uh, maybe charter a bus if you're anywhere in the Great Lakes region. Uh, this will be October 27th. Please welcome a good friend of ours and a really funny comedian, Mr. George Miller. Hi, George. Nice to see you. Nice, nice to see you, George. Nice I, to see you, I too. like your sweater. It's, Thank you very much. I've worn it before. Yeah. It's, if you can, can we get close to that? It's kind of like your tribute to Hollywood Squares, and I think... <laughs> <laughs> you did, did you mention both my tickle appearances? <laughs> oh, 
Well, one let's is see. in Warren, Ohio, October 27th through October 31st. The other is in Monroeville, Ohio, the following Monroeville, week. Monroeville, Ohio. November. Thank you. Somebody from Detroit. And uh, that would be November 3rd through November 7th, the same club, Tickles. Tickles. Have you yeah. played uh, Tickles? Oh, there's a Tickles in Warren and a Tickles in Monroe. Right. Apparently they have that creativity, and so they named the same... Same thing twice. Same thing twice, Now, yeah. have you played Tickles in Warren, Ohio? Haven't been there before, no. Uh, how about Monroeville, Ohio? I've never been in Monroeville, no. They don't have uh -uh. casino gambling I rarely leave Warren, my room. Do they? <laughs> they don't have casino gambling there, do they? I don't think so, but I'll report back to you on the next show if there is one. <laughs> Uh, what have you been up to? Where have you been? Oh, I've been having a great time. I was in uh, at the Cleveland Comedy Club last week working for Dino. I always work for people, the last name is O, or the last word is O, Bruno Dino, uh -huh. Jacko, and uh, Bob also is a guy. And I want to tell you kind of an interesting story, we hope. Uh, <laughs> Bob is a guy who is one of the owners of the Cleveland Comedy Club. He's also a patrolman. Why are you making that awful? Well, I'll tell oh. you, you really want to know? Yeah. Well, my right contact is drying out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. See, you oh, kind of depressed the audience. Yeah, but, I should have said that. But then again, it's your spot, so yeah. what do I care? I think they were kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were fairly depressed before I came out. So oh, I'd no, no. <laughs> like to see you do this, pal. <laughs> the hell can you do with that? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. I wasn't watching the it's show, so I... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Cleveland, a wonderful comedy club, and Bob, as I say, is a, uh, besides being a nightclub owner, is also a Cleveland patrolman, and which I did not know until about the third night we were there. And we were all having sandwiches after the show. And he says, uh, <laughs> wait a minute, this ties in? Hold it. Don't be but skeptical just, just, so far. I'm taken away with the romantic life you lead. <laughs> <laughs> you and Bob having sandwiches after yeah. the show, wow. I mostly just sit in my room, listen to the clock. That's about <laughs> it. But uh, anyway, I know, well, a lot of us were having sandwiches, and I know he was a cop because he says, uh, will you pass the mustard, please? Yeah, here you go. Will you take it out of the jar, please? So I was yeah, pretty kind sure of a he was, yeah. that he was, a, sure cop, he was yeah. a cop. They yeah. do that with driver's licenses. Yeah, when you get pulled yeah, over. Sure. We don't have to explain these. No, this is no. big-time entertainment. That's right. Uh, <laughs> now, but, uh, uh, the last time you were on this uh, program, you mentioned my mom. You said you had seen her. How your is mom. Your, how yeah. is your mother? My mother is very well. Uh, parents, do you have this uh, thing that even though you're grown up or supposedly grown up, they uh, always tell you stuff you know to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Like we're at the supermarket and I say, well, I think I'll go back and I'll get a half a gallon of milk. Well, be sure to pick out a carton that has the latest date stamped on it. <laughs> Gee, Mom, I was going to get one that says, about to sour. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Everything working out okay? Pretty good. My uncle... Oh, one of your semi-snotty staff laughing quite a bit. <laughs> Now you've done Tell him to stop that. Audible it's hissing. Very rude. Aud this is the first time since we've been right. on the air. We've had audible hissing. That's right. George. That's right. Anyway, I wanted to tell my. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I find your vocabulary limited but stimulating. <laughs> my uncle Bill from North Carolina, who I have never mentioned before. Bill is a uh, what do you call it? A crooked bookkeeper. Uh -huh. Back in uh, dead people on the payroll, no problem. <laughs> and. Uh, Bill got married late in life, and uh, he has a teenage daughter now, and they have never really gotten along. Uh, he put literature from the Moonies in her lunchbox, so you know <laughs> that something was going on. Yeah. He came down to uh, Hollywood about uh, two months ago, and he goes down to one of those uh, chicken takeout places in the afternoon, and there's nobody in there. But he saw the sign, yes, we're open. Mm -hmm. So we went inside, and he saw the other side of the sign, sorry, we're closed. So he left. <laughs> And uh, I think we're going to have to wait. <laughs> and uh, got outside. Yes, we're open. He went back inside. Sorry, we're closed. So he left. And he did that about 2,000 times. And he's now in the state hospital waiting for hee haw to come on. So. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the relatives are very well. What about, uh, we have to pause here? Oh, no. Oh, no, yeah. I was just getting hot. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. They won't cool off. They're, uh, you have lovely hands. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back with George Miller. Oh, we have to pause here. Yeah.
Welcome back to the show. Uh, George Miller is with us. I know you, you like watching a lot of television. Oh, I love television. Anything in the new fall season My strike whole life. fancy? Uh, no, not really. I uh, pay close attention to the commercials, something no comedian has ever touched on before. And uh, I love it when television insults your, your intelligence. One high quality at low discount prices? No, we want to pay big dough for crappy products. Oh, really? He heard that one before, he said. How about the ladies' product where the lady comes on and says, uh, I don't want to be uncomfortable for one more minute than I have to be. Well, gee, that's funny. I want to be uncomfortable for as long as I possibly can. <laughs> See that ugly yellow stain? That's no way to talk about a Chinese person. I can say that because my best friend, well, he's actually half Italian, half Chinese. Video Pong, really a nice guy. And, uh, were you watching television? I think it was a week ago, Tuesday. I couldn't believe it. It was lesbian night on Family Feud. No, I didn't, I didn't see that. Richard Dawson didn't know what the hell to do. Yeah. He started to pucker up and got punched in the throat. It was really amazing. Do you remember the commercial years ago it was on? It was uh, Will Rogers Jr. for Grape Nuts, the simple cereal. You know, like Corn Flakes is real complicated. Uh -huh. Hey, you like Corn Flakes? Oh, no, no thanks. I don't want to get in over my head. I was doing a little acting there. Little you acting. have to do that in order to grow. Yeah, yeah. Um, what it, now, I know, uh, how, how are things going? Uh, you date your, yeah, I mean, you're constantly dating. What a, yeah, what yeah. a long question, yeah. How, um, how, are, how is that going? Oh, it's going very, I had a blind date recently, and I want to tell you about this. And uh, I wanted to go to one of those uh, female exotic dancer places, and she wanted to go to a, a male exotic dancer place. The a female exotic dancer place I thought was real interesting. The sign intrigued me. It said, Betty, nude, <laughs> and then some. <laughs> I was real curious about that and then some yeah, part. Yeah. What does she do? Come out nude and then pass around her x-rays? What does she do on that? Uh, <laughs> but uh, this lady was very, I don't, I'm not a male chauvinist, remember. And did you know one of the early male chauvinists was Tarzan? No. Remember didn't. those famous words, me, Tarzan, Jane, you ignorant slut? Remember those? <laughs> And uh, she was one of these people, and I know you know people like this, they talk about wants and needs and goals. She, Tell me a couple of your goals. I say, well, I want to have sex with you and then leave. <laughs> two. So, well, that's two. Yeah. Anyway, romantically, it was unsatisfactory for her because I was too quick. Common oh, male yeah. problem, too quick. Yeah, when she was moaning the second time, I was at Denny's ordering the waffle. <laughs> Not a pretty story, but one that needed to be told. <laughs> you know the woman I always wanted to meet more than any no, other? No, who would that be? Sybil. Oh, Sybil. The one with, what was it, 16, 17 personalities? I always wanted to meet Sybil so I could say to her, who the hell do you think you are? Uh, let me ask you about, uh, I remember something you told me once about uh, a, a line that you used by way of introducing yourself to women. When that you, was when Jeff you Altman that did that. Jeff Altman, a good friend of ours, uh, no matter what the situation, he wouldn't know the lady, he'd just go up to her point blank and he would always say the same thing. Aren't you the daughter of circus people? <laughs> Uh, uh, what are you doing after the show? I remember the one time you said you'd like to drive around and uh, g give the finger to vagrants. <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like to do that. It gives them hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be doing some uh, dinner theater uh, in the Midwest. I love farce, don't you? And... Uh, <laughs> And of course, I got to get going real soon after the show because Penny's is having a yarn clearance. I got to do that. Yeah, yeah. And tomorrow night I'll be at the comedy store in the main room, and then on Saturday I'll be at a Herman's Cabaret in Encino. I always play the big establishments. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Oh, thank you, somebody from Detroit. Yeah. Didn't we? That's where we started, wasn't it? Yeah, it did uh, seem familiar. We have to pause here for oh, commercial. No. no, we'll be right back. Okay, George Miller. <laughs> Now, we 
have to go. Thanks to everybody who was here. George Miller, Marvin Zindler, Warren Eckstein, our announcer, Bill Wendell, and of course, Paul Schaefer from the band. Monday, Mary Kay and Larry Miller, Hank Stram, and uh, we'll do the Inquirer predictions then. Have a good weekend. Good night. <laughs>
Probably no, the censors. No, I don't know for no, sure, no, but... Uh, no, no. You're just teasing, aren't you? Yeah, but you know, I always talk about... Did I talk about Sybil the last time I was on the show? My memory's failing quickly. Uh, Jeez, I don't know. I'll tell you Sybil... what, we'll, uh, we'll get oh, out we the file. To we'll go away okay. for commercial. We'll check this. We have a huge cross-reference library upstairs. <laughs> and we, we like to find out just what, everything you said every time you're on the show, George. <laughs> and we'll be right back. back to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a fine holiday season. And speaking of that, uh, later in the program tonight, we have the, uh, the Air Force Academy Choir, uh, all the way from, uh, you laugh now, but uh, all the way from, uh, where are they? In uh, Colorado. Yeah, in Colorado, but what city? Uh, Denver. No, no, it's not Denver. It's uh, Colorado. Colorado Springs. Colorado That's Springs. Right. They're here and there, so they're going to favor us with some That's holiday. Uh, the yeah, Guardian nice. Angels going to come back? They were here on another show. They were show. here on our, another right. show, yeah. Remember yeah. That. Now, you mentioned uh, uh, women. How are things with you and uh, the, the women that you see? Or well, is it one, more than one or just? Well, uh, sometimes less, actually. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> have you been through that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hard to well, believe. Well, you know what I don't like? You're squirming back in, doing that apology thing, because you'll just, you know, you say anything. Oh, Honey, you know, this is so silly. I don't even remember what we were fighting about. You pushed my parents off the Empire State Building. <laughs> Boy, I forgot you all that. about that. Yeah. Your mother really sailed. She yeah. really did. <laughs> <laughs> a... I think last time on the show, maybe, no, I, I think I didn't talk about it. Sybil, which is just oh, on television. Sybil, yeah, one, yeah. That's the woman I always wanted to meet. 16, 17 different personalities. Sure. I always wanted to meet Sybil so I could say to her, who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> Smattering of applause. That's right. That's yeah. right. I was thinking another thing about women is uh, differences between uh, Los Angeles and uh, uh, New York. Oh, this and will be good. Is, Difference between yeah, LA and yeah. New York. I don't. Is Gee, we hardly hear any no, of this. I've no. never touched on this. But this is new ground that I'm breaking. You're really today. pioneering an area, George. I am. That's very nice. Now, one thing about uh, <laughs> one thing about Los Angeles is. The sunny, nice weather all year round. Weather is a little different. Weather is a little bit different. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Like about two days ago, it's December, right? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. December, two days ago, I get up, the sun is shining, the sky is so blue, and I thought, gee, what a beautiful day for a drive over to buy a pill that will knock me unconscious. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, one thing is definitely different. No, it is the same, I should say, and that is the hooker situation. Now, I guess here it's Times Square, right? Hello? Oh, yeah. This is like there's no groupies backstage, right? Same. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Now, in Los Angeles, I live right near the Sunset Strip, which is unbelievable. I went by Havenhurst and Sunset one night. That's if you ever get out there, you know, and you want something to do. Nineteen, I counted, 19 hookers on one corner. I couldn't believe it. I call pimp control. <laughs> I said, hey, I think you pretty well got it covered in this one area. Uh -huh. And they checked. Sure enough, it was a computer foul-up. <laughs> so, got it ironed out then. Yeah. Those two things, I yeah. guess, would be your, or the two different now, kinds of hookers. Now, uh, Who what? does your nails? The gardener? What? <laughs> No. That's an old Jackie Leonard joke. I'm sorry. That's excuse me. I don't like new material. I find it kind of bogs a performer down. Uh, now, uh, what's what? Can, can I ask you what's bothering you lately? Is that uh, where we are now? No, I wanted to talk more about the Christmas season. Oh, back to I, the Christmas. Yeah, I was okay. telling you about that because I wanted to mention my mother. We always have the traditional holiday dinner. We go to one of those uh, fast food hamburger places over in Hollywood, uh, Pimples and Braces. We always go over there, and uh, oh, yeah, we always go over there. And what oh, we do is we exchange my. what I call the uh, the Christmas gift. Pimples and Pimples braces. Pimples and braces. Well, oh, no. my. A lot of people don't know that uh, a lot of first class restaurants have derogatory names. No, now. I didn't Did know, you know that. Yeah, no. there's the I think there's the dirty cellar and the filthy pig. Uh -huh. And I was talking about this with a friend of mine. He owns a very swank restaurant in uh, Beverly Hills, the roach infested hellhole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So anyway, after the hamburger, then we, actually, I don't buy my mother anything, and she, in return, gets me the cheapest possible gift that she can buy. Yeah. In fact, she has a rule, she will not purchase any gift for me that cannot be bought from a vending machine. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, yeah, last year I got the box of Junior Mints, which, uh, <laughs> and she had bought them months before, and they had all melted into one big Senior Mint, so, uh -huh. so. And my uncle, we got more time for this? Uh, let, let me just check. Oh, yeah, we have enough time. My, 
<laughs> yeah, we got time. Did Senior Winces die or no, what happened there? No, he's still oh. back there. So, uh, my uncle, of course, is uh, coming to visit, and he is like a CPA, and he's so organized, it's uh -huh. unbelievable. And I, myself, I'm always losing things I can't find. I was going to ask you, did you ever lose something that's real important to you, and you were never able to find it? I mean, besides your personality, did you ever... Uh, <laughs> What? We're out of time? <laughs> uh, George, have a pleasant holiday. Oh, thank you nice very to much. see you again. Thanks, Pimples and, and braces. braces. George Miller. We'll be right back with the U.S. Naval Academy.